Hello, Gary Stearman here with Bob Ulrich to talk with you about our upcoming Orlando Prophecy Summit, March 28th through 30th. Bob? The big event is almost here. There are close to 2,000 people registered. There are still a few spots left, but the next best thing to being there is live streaming. We're here today to make that announcement. We're going to have some incredible messages live stream from the main auditorium at the Renaissance SeaWorld Hotel in Orlando. You'll hear men like Mark Biltz, and he has thrilled audiences everywhere with his famous Blood Moon Phenomenon lectures. L.A. Morzuli, fresh off a trip to Peru where he's uncovered evidence that we believe may be DNA evidence of the Nephilim. Chuck Missler, who never failed up with an amazing prophetic message. Jonathan Kahn, author of The Harbinger and many, many more. All you need to do is go to prophecyinthenews.com. There's a $50 live streaming fee to have all these messages brought into your home. Go and sign up and register today. Hello again, Gary Stearman. Time for another update from Prophecy in the News on this Wednesday, March the 5th. Uh, we are continuing our conversation that we began in studio yesterday, March 4th, with Avi Lipkin. In fact, we're uh, doing this in one day and stretching it out over three, or who knows, we might even go four days. Avi, very interesting conversation about a very serious matter in Ukraine, southern Russia. And yesterday we talked a, a little bit about Vladimir Putin, how he might get bogged down in all of this. Today, let's talk about the ethnic situation in Russia, specifically the religions of the Russian people uh, versus the Muslims. Of course, uh, you and all our viewers remember the name the Soviet Union. Yes. And the Soviet Union broke up in 1991. And one might say, well, why did the Russians allow the Soviet Union to break up? You know, a lot of people in, in Russia were angry, you know, with o Gorbachev and uh, Yeltsin, all these people who allowed the Soviet Union to break up. And out of the Soviet Union uh, came a number of republics that broke away, uh -huh. including the six Islamic republics, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan, the stands, they're called. Yes. Now, the population of the Soviet Union was 350 million people. Now, the U.S., more or less at the same time, was like 250 million. So the Soviet Union was, population-wise, more numerous than the American people. Mm -hmm. Now, what happened was, from the 350 million people, 200 million broke away from the Soviet Union in these Islamic republics, most of which are Muslims, Turkish, Turkic Muslims, who, by the way, all have the rights to Turkish passports. In other words, if Turkey joins the European Union, it's not only 70 million Anatolian Turks in Turkey, it's 200 million Turkic peoples from the former Soviet Union. They can all move to Europe mm. because they have Turkish passports. Yeah. That would give the Muslims an immediate majority in the European Union if Turkey joins. And I don't want to mention names of presidents, but the U.S. government actually supports Turkey entering the European Union. But we'll leave that for a moment. Russia today is not 350 million. Russia today is 150 million. Uh, I think one of the reasons the Russians want to take off this part of uh, Ukraine is that that will yeah, actually... Yeah, point at that again. Right there, it, 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 you're talking about central Ukraine. In other words, some people point the map like this, uh -huh. and certain people point the map like this. I would say probably Kharkov, Luhansk, Dnepropetrovsk, Zaporozhets, and Donetsk, and Sevastopol, these areas will be part of the new uh, areas of Russia because the majority of the population is Russian ethnic. And, and Putin wants these Russian ethnic people as Russian citizens to counterbalance the Muslims that are in Russia because of the 150 million people, now it'll be more than 150 million, but of the 150 million people in Russia today, there's a very large Muslim minority. And the Russian army, talking about Gog and Magog, the Russian army soon will be approaching 50% 50% Muslim conscripts, because they have many, many children per family, whereas the Jews and the Christians have one child per family. You know, as you mentioned this, uh, Ezekiel uh, 38, 5 mentions a, a company a, a, of uh, allies along with Gog, which we take to be Russia. And in verse 5, it says Persia, which would be modern Iran, Ethiopia, uh, and Libya with them, and then it goes on to talk about Gomer with all his bands and the house of Togarma of the North Quarters. Now, 
I've seen a lot of expositors mention the House of Togarma in the North Quarters as being the region of Turkey and southern Russia. Uh, and etymologically speaking, Togarma certainly would be the area of Turkey. And, and, and so what you're, what you're saying right now is centered in, in Bible prophecy. What you're talking about is centered in Bible prophecy. I think also it's remarkable that Russia, or shall I say the Soviet Union, was a communist atheist nation. And today it is Putin who says that what made Russia great was its Christianity. And it's very important to stress, and this is we're going to talk a little bit now about the history of Russia. The Russians were up here in Moscow, and the Poles were here, the white Russians were here. These were all, again, different tribes. And the Tatars who were here, the Tatars, all this was Turkish Empire. And the Muslims were coming up and raiding. They were raiding Moscow. They were raiding Warsaw. They were raiding Kiev. These Tatars would come, and one of the big things in those days was taking slaves. And they take Slavic girls as slaves, kill the men. The Russian Orthodox Church came to Russia in the year 995 AD. Hmm. In other words, Christianity in Russia is relatively a new thing. The Russian Orthodox Church unified the Russian tribes. And then these Russian tribes got organized and started pushing south. And they started pushing the Turks back. The Turks, the Tatars. Now, what happened was a lot died. The, the Russians killed three million Circassians. They live in Israel today, some of these Circassians. They're Muslim, but they serve in the Israeli army. And so they were here, Circassians, and, the, and also in Sochi. The Circassians were also in Sochi. The Tatars, who are Muslims, were here. And Stalin and others, they killed them and expelled them. There's a very great anger. And the Muslims are waiting for their revenge against Russia. And the Muslims, though they serve in the military, this is a problem. You have a, a religion called Islam that wants to destroy the Russian church. And they are in the Russian army. There's a question of dual loyalty here. And in Ukraine, the Muslims actually do not like the Russians. The, 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 they're a minority. They want to be with the Ukrainians against the Russians. They're, they're united. The enemy of my enemy is my ally. All right. Now, let's, let's try to make sense of all. Uh, let's try to make sense of all this because we've got a situation here in which uh, you can't tell the players without a program. All of these various groups you're talking about, where do you see this falling out in, in real terms? Well, in my opinion, uh, what's going to happen is that the United States and Europe, you know, European Union, uh, they will start sanctioning Russia. I don't know how much they can do because Russia can cut off the, the oil and gas flow going to the east, and that's going to be a mess for these countries. Yeah. Now, an interesting point that nobody talks about is that in this part of the Ukraine, in the Catholic part, the western part of the Ukraine, you've got Shell and Exxon going for shale oil and shale gas. They haven't hit it yet, but they will. <clears throat> so yeah. eventually the Ukraine, as an independent republic, could theoretically supply and very closely supply Poland and these Western, uh, Western countries. Um, I think that, and I, I, I don't know if I'm right or I'm wrong, I'm objective, I, I don't have any favorites here. I think that the Russia is going into a swamp now. And the world will turn against Russia. A lot is about economics, I don't have to tell you. Uh, you can have, you know, boycott, divestment, and sanctions, like they're trying to do against yeah. Israel, do it against Russia also. But in the end, the problem will be, I believe, a financial hit that the Russian people will take. This will cause like an Arab Spring in Russia. The Russian people, they agree with the Ukrainians. Let's work with the Europeans. You know, one world government. Yeah. Let's make money. Let's have a nice life. Russia, you know, under Putin, they still have the empire. Now, going out today, let's, let's broach another subject. Let's mix Israel into this mix because just recently, uh, Netanyahu and Obama had another, if you will, tete-a-tete, -tete, uh, which wasn't particularly friendly. <clears throat> uh, Netanyahu is a, a man of strong opinion. Obama is a man of strong opinion. John Kerry has been in the region. And they're declaring a Palestinian state, essentially, as a reality right now. They're operating as though there's already a Palestinian state. While all this is going on in, in the north, to the north, up in Ukraine, what's going to happen there? Well, firstly, I believe that God reshuffles the deck. 
Now, if you remember, Hillary Clinton, when she was the uh, Secretary of State, she was constantly bashing Israel. And one day, a Tunisian fruit vendor uh, self-immolates, commits suicide because he was arrested, and his fruits were, everything was, con that started the Arab Spring. Tunisia, Libya, Egypt, Yemen, yes. Syria. And this has nothing to do with Israel. You know, so I th forgive me for talking in God's name, but I think God is saying, you know, you people want to punish Israel. Israel is the apple of God's eye if we believe in God and we believe in the Bible. Zechariah 2 verse 12 says that Israel is the apple of God's eye. And anyone who touches Israel touches the apple of God's eye. So all of this Arab Spring, which has nothing to do with Jews or Christians except the killing of Christians in the Middle East, all of a sudden comes and reshuffles the deck with the uh, Western powers. Now, if, if President, I don't want to say the names, if you have a, a U.S. State Department policy, which has been the same State Department policy for the last 40, 50 years, if they want to come against Israel, then God is going to send the Russians and the Ukrainians and have upheavals in other parts of the world. China, the, the Muslim terrorists killed 27 Chinese in a stabbing incident at Kunming train station and wounded another 160 people who's Muslim terrorists from East Turkestan or Xinjiang, Xinjiang province. Well, here in Ezekiel 38, God says, I'm against you, Gog. And then he goes on to describe how he's going to pull Gog into the mix, if you will. Uh, in verse 4 of Ezekiel 38, he says, I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws and bring thee forth and all thine army and horses and horsemen, etc. God here speaks of Gog, this northern confederation of powers, as, as a huge beast, and, and he says, I'm going to pull you into the fray. I'm going to turn you around. And it's very clear uh, in, the, in the text what's being said here. Uh, you think Israel, uh, or not Israel, do you think that Russia is being pulled into position now by all that's going on in Ukraine? Well, uh, what I think is, and I have a slightly different viewpoint about Russia, and, I'm sure you and, do. And I, I, would, I think that Gog and Magog is not going to be Russia. I think it's good. If Russia has a Christian revival, things will turn out better for yeah. Russia, I think. But if, if like I said before, if 50% of the conscripts of the Russian army are Muslim, or they will be very soon, Russia has a demographic problem that it has to contend with. Um, uh, I think Gog and Magog is going to be a collection of countries, probably the European Union, with the Turks, with the Muslims, who will all come against Israel. And Russia may be part of it, but uh, I think since there was no Russia two, 3,000 years ago, it was just empty land, it, it was referring to Turkish or northern kingdoms, which were are today Muslim. Let's continue this discussion tomorrow. We're uh, out of time today, and it, this is getting fascinating to me. I'm Gary Stearman, along with Avi Lipkin, and we'll continue this discussion tomorrow. Keep looking up, everybody.